wasn't planning on filming right now. Um, you guys are just really catching me at my finest moments for this vlog. But um, I just had a full on panic attack, hyperventilating, feeling like I was gonna pass out. Really glad I have to go to work here soon. I just feel so dumb and so naive with the shrinking eyes episode. I'm glad that I finally had this panic attack to be honest with you because since Jensen's eye appointment and me making that YouTube vlog, I just don't think it fully set in what it meant for his eyes to shrink. And I googled images but those images didn't really seem accurate or they were just like really above and beyond. So I just don't think I had this real concept of what was happening or what will happen. And I mention it with my other crying situation. So I don't know what order I'm gonna be putting these videos in, but there's a family that I really look towards as role models and their son is 17. And I don't think they realize like how much I seriously appreciate them. Like I honestly, I just wanna give them a hug. Like I just appreciate their guidance and just their way of thinking. And I'm gonna like tear up because I just really appreciate them. But um, yeah, so love you guys seriously so much. Holy crap, what's wrong with me? Anyway, so they shared their experience with their son's eyes shrinking and getting the shells and um, I need to do way more research, look into what that all entails, but it was just eye-opening in the best way possible for me. I think for once I wasn't being like, I wasn't, I was maybe hopeful or not as realistic as I usually am. I don't know what it was. There was just a barrier and I'm finally breaking through it. It feels good to acknowledge that because I, I, I knew I emotionally wasn't accepting it. I just I could feel it. I don't know. This is Maggie. Like she just ugh. so I just know that I wasn't accepting of what was happening and they've shared their experience and just showed me what their son's eyes looked like before they shrunk, after they shrunk, and just what that means. And again, I'm just so glad they did because now I I, I can definitely see the similarities between their son's eyes and Jensen's smaller eye. And, and I now know the path that that's going on and I have realistic expectations of where that's gonna get me. And just so many things that I didn't even think about, like the fact that the shrinking eye then is like your eye it's from the side profile, it's gonna be like sunken in. There's all these things that we're gonna have to consider. In the end, the shells are probably gonna be something that we do consider. We'll cross that line when we get to it and I'll definitely keep you guys informed on that. But I just, I just feel so naive for my last video. And um, yeah, not considering the scleral shells at the time when the doctor was telling me about them because I just was so naive. But from this other family, they just said it made their son a little bit more approachable to other kids that might otherwise be too shy to come up and talk to them. So yeah, this is something I think we're gonna have to definitely consider. I don't know, just wanted to make that point because again, just felt so naive about it. But anyway, yeah, glad we covered that. Careful bud, we'll talk to you guys later. Okay, bye. You're thirsty. Yeah. I'm good. Oh, would you like some cocoa weeds please? Would you like some more, please? <laughs> Good job, bud. So the video of me crying was filmed weeks ago, if not a month ago at this point. And I really wanted to get this filming done because we have a lot going on these next couple weeks. So my time is limited on when I can do these things and when I can edit. More, please? <laughs> Mama's gotta go to work here real soon, so I'm just trying to get this stuff done. Oh, look at there, you got a lot of muffin in your bed. So we're gonna try to multitask here a little bit. I'm really glad to see him eating because yesterday he slept for 14 hours, was super lethargic, was barely up during the day. And we went to the pediatricians because we're like, okay, this is not him. And he was very inconsolably fussy. But this is one of those things, part of his disease that in the back of my mind, I'm just like, well, he's at risk for focal seizures. He's at risk for losing his hearing, which we know is probably gonna happen at some point. So I never wanna take those risks, but then I also feel silly for taking him to the pediatrician so often. But you know, here we are, we're just trying to play safe and sorry, and it ended up just being nothing. It is what it is, isn't it, baby? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let him finish eating here. We'll get set up on the ground and we'll go over scleral lenses. Kind of going back to that shrinking eyes episode and how I ignored the doctor when he was talking about scleral lenses and how I have now come to the realization that that is gonna be a necessity for us. But I will get into that in a minute. That's your muffin. You gonna finish it? All right, buddy. 
<laughs> mm, is that good? Last bite? Mmm. Good job, bud. Scleral shells are those prosthetic eyes, otherwise sometimes known as glass eyes, but they're not actually like a full eyeball. The better way to explain it is like a contact lens, like a very hard contact lens that fills the whole frontal orbit of the eye. All of this information is just my own research and talking to the family that has the teenager. Um, and I just contacted our eye doctor to get in for an appointment or have a phone call to go over all of my questions and how soon we need to do this because there's so much more that I didn't even know that I didn't even consider and that's what I'm trying to fill you guys in now for a summed up version. So once we go through the process, obviously I'll let you know more detail about that, but this is the very basics, the very bare minimum of research, okay? Being fit for these scleral shells, they put a mold into the eye socket and it sets within two to three minutes. They take it out and it's like the consistency of a hard boiled egg, like the white part of the hard boiled egg. After that, they use that like dental mold basically, like that stone to then take an imprint of the internal part where the eye was touching. And then from there, at least from this one, one source, it's a um, softened, heated up plexiglass that is then molded from there. There's a lot more that goes into it and they have clear shells versus painted shells and the painted shells, it goes through like this drastic process of making it look like it's a real eye. It's seriously, there's so much that goes into it, which is probably why they cost so much. So costs from a personal source, clear shells are about $800 and the painted shells are about $7,000. And I called our eye area and they said that typically speaking, insurances aren't gonna cover this. And so I was like, all right, well, can I have the insurance codes? I'm gonna check up with our insurance we really have pretty good insurance. Denied, denied, denied. Um, I think three of the four were denied and the other one they said might be able to get a clearance, but probably it's gonna be denied. Unless you have Medicaid, it can be somewhat covered, but uh, it sounds like it's mostly out of pocket. So something to look forward to. My very basic research here, if you don't have an eye in there, the eye orbits themselves, like the bone around here kind of starts to sag. There's these things called conformers. If a baby's born without eyes or very small eyes to begin with, they have to wear these conformers to make sure that their eye sockets are growing with their body. From the personal source, it sounds like they didn't have to do that because they got the scleral shells in the kiddo's eyes soon enough so that they didn't have to mess with trying to fix his eye orbits themselves. So these scleral shells have to be swapped out every couple of years as the child's growing to grow with their eye orbits. With my own research, they were saying you have to replace the scleral shells three to four times by the time the child is 10. And then lastly, how these scleral shells are inserted, how often do you take them in and out? I'm not gonna get into this too much because I'm sure it depends when you're first putting them in and with kiddos versus adults and I, so I'm not gonna get into that too much but I did watch a YouTube video of how these scleral shells are inserted into the eye. Imagine a large hard contact lens. It's like a cup basically. So this guy has a little suction cup that sticks to the lens and then he fills the whole cup part with sterile saline and then you basically want to make sure that none of that comes out and bend over with your eyelid pride and you like just pop it in there. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be an experience. But overall, it sounds like you don't really even have to take it out for like years and or maybe once or twice a year just to kind of clean it. At least that part's good. Jensen, no thank you. I'm sorry, but we can't push on our eyeballs. I'm a mean mom. Well, that summed it up anyway. I was gonna be done talking, but Jensen really wants me to be done talking. Hey, Jensen, I love you. Can I have a kiss? Oh. Man, keep getting denied in front of YouTube. <laughs> it's okay, I got lots of kisses the other day. I did, I'm gonna tell him about it. I did, I got so many kisses after I came home from work. Okay, well, there's a lot going on right now. So anyway, guys, and that just sums that up. I will let you know once we get more information about our own scleral lenses and what we're gonna have to do in the process with that when it comes time. Our next video is a little trip that we're taking and I'm so excited to share that. Yes, are you gonna be excited? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. As always, please continue to comment. We love your comments. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Yes, yes, we gotta find all the people and we have to spread all the awareness, all the awareness. <laughs> Whoosh.